What do Mozart, Beethoven, Liszt, and Bernstein have in common? All were not only composers, they were also pianists and conductors. In our time, many famous conductors started their careers as pianists, including Andre Previn, Daniel Barenboim, and Vladimir Ashkenazi. So why should pianists conduct? There are some significant reasons why every piano student should learn to conduct basic meters, even if they never play in an ensemble led by a conductor. The first is that the piano imitates the orchestra. The piano is arguably the most versatile of instruments. Its range is actually deeper than the lowest notes of the contrabass, and it goes higher than the highest notes of the piccolo, making its range of notes wider than an entire orchestra. So the piano imitates the orchestra, from the soft strings to rumbling timpani to bright winds to a harsh brass section. It's often a good idea to imagine the sound of an orchestra when playing solo piano music. This helps our creativity and also helps us to prevent or overcome some limitations inherent in the instrument. Another important reason, and really the most important of all, is to develop rhythmic feel. A metronome can give you the beat, but it can't give you rhythmic feel. Today's metronomes are mostly smartphone apps. Many of them offer very useful features that a purely mechanical metronome could never do, such as rhythmic subdivisions, cross rhythms, and complex meters. Mechanical metronomes have one major advantage over their digital counterparts, and this is their pendulum motion. In fact, this motion is quite similar to the movements in conducting. So this is like the pendulum, and we make similar movements in conducting. So they can help us to develop a rhythmic feel more so than a mere periodic digital click can. So if you just have that click that goes tick, 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 without any pendulum, then we're actually missing something. So what do we need to know? I hope by now that you're convinced that learning a bit about conducting will be useful to your work at the piano. You don't need to immerse yourself in advanced conducting skills. Unless you're an aspiring maestro, you really just need the basics. The first thing to know is the ictus. The ictus is simply the moment the beat occurs. And we can show the ictus with our wrist, just like that. When we conduct, that's the ictus, ictus. Just like that. The next thing to know is the downbeat. So the downbeat is always down in conducting. Simply move your arm downward to give the downbeat. The exact moment of the downbeat, the ictus, is given with the flick of the wrist. Now, with that by way of introduction, let's start with the simplest meter namely conducting in duple meter, also called duple time. Most often, this is 2-4 meter. To conduct in two, move your right arm down, curving slightly to the right at the end, and then reverse the movement to get back to the starting point. So just like this. So this would be one, two. Focus on fluid movements of the wrist. This helps players to, to anticipate the beat and prevents the rhythm from seeming mechanical. Just like this. One, two. One, two. Note that conducting in two can also mean compound meters, most commonly 6-8. This 6-8 is a compound meter since the top number of the time signature, 6, is divisible by 3. This means that there are two beats per measure rather than six, as you might assume at first glance. Next is triple meter. And this goes down, right, and then up. Triple meter has three beats to each measure. Most often, it involves simple meters of 3-4, or sometimes 3-8, but it can also be a compound meter such as 9-8. So we take that nine, it's evenly divisible by three, right, and then we get the three beats. So to conduct in three, just move your right arm straight down, that's the downbeat, snap the wrist to give the downbeat, then you turn the hand, move it to the right for beat two, and then beat three is the upbeat, so it's back up at the top where we started. So I'll do this again, just in slow motion. So down, then there's a little movement of the wrist. We're kind of curving it like this, a smoother motion. That's beat two, 
Then we go up for the upbeat. This is beat three. And I'll do it faster now. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Next is conducting in four. To conduct in four, after giving the downbeat, move the right hand to the left for beat two, then to the right for beat three, and then we're going to go to the top for beat four. So this is beat one, the downbeat. Two is over here. Three and four. So let's do this properly now. So it'll be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Notice the wrist. One, two, three, four, one. So now that you know the basic meters, you can already start becoming more expressive in your conducting. Try setting a metronome to say 60 beats per minute. One, two, three. So I'm going to leave this running now. So here's a question. How would you conduct a piece in triple meter in three that's, let's say, angry and militant? Let's give it a try. So you could pause this video and try it yourself. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So notice your arm movements in this imaginary piece. So they're probably angular movements and with a very precise ictus or a very precise beat. I'm leaving the metronome running now and let's try conducting a different imaginary piece, also in triple meter, so also in three. And this time this piece is calm and soft. How would you conduct a piece that is calm and soft? So do you make bigger or smaller arm movements? So let's give it a try. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So there we go, that's soft. So the beats are actually not as precisely defined, and they're soft around the edges. I'm going to turn this off now. Now, did you notice that we maintained a constant tempo while expressing entirely different emotions with our imaginary orchestra? So this is the power of conducting, something you'd never be able to get from a mere metronome if you hadn't conducted. So practice conducting the music that you play, Hear it in your mind as you conduct, and you'll be surprised by the improvement in your rhythmic feel.